We have supported PTC optics cameras for quite some time now, but the whole implementation has been extensively re-engineered to support all the settings in those cameras. So what we can now offer you is the PTC Pro controller in this video, I'll demonstrate it to you, which will have control over every single feature this camera supports over Visca. And that's quite unique. Most third party controllers you find, they'll give you like basic access to, of course, pan, tilt, zoom. We do that as well. We have the joystick, but we can also allow you to adjust the iris value and shutter speed and not just by increments, by, by the actual values that the camera support. And that's really exciting. So uh, I want to get started uh, with that, but then just first, let's take a look at um, what our PTC controllers do in particular. So the one thing is, as I just explained, that we put great effort and pride into supporting the exact value ranges and features of the Visca cameras we support. We, we do support a lot of different cameras as well. This video is about the PTC Optics camera, which is a great and very popular camera. We also allow you to adjust multiple cameras at the same time. So you can actually, on the camera selector, uh, select one, two, three, four cameras, and then you could send the same settings out to those cameras. That's also a pretty innovative and unique way of using our controllers. So um, you can, uh, you can, yeah, you can also get two versions. So we have the full version, and the full version of any of our controllers mean that you can take any of these device cores that we support and install. And the device core is a little bit like an app you install on your telephone, which will give it a feature. So if you install a device core on your Skyhawk controller, like uh, support for a video router or a video switcher or uh, even two cameras for the same controller, then uh, it means that the software support gets into the firmware of the controller and it will allow you to communicate to multiple devices. That's a pretty cool feature about uh, the full version of the Skyhawk controllers. But for some of our controllers like the PTC Pro, we also offer limited editions. So a limited edition for PTC Optics would be the controller, support for PTC Optics, that's it. You can change how these controls work in the web interface of the controller, but you have limits on how you can extend it in terms of communicating with other devices. And why? Because most of you will just want to PTC control your PTC optics cameras. And you don't need support for everything else that we normally offer. So the limited edition is a great bargain if you are looking for a powerful but focused solution for your PTC optics cameras. And of course you save a buck, we can sell it at a discounted price. And if you look in the description of this video, you'll find a link to our website. We offer a two day worldwide delivery so we can have it out the door almost before you pay. But uh, it's very easy to offer uh, to order online and uh, you'll get a quick delivery, hopefully if we have them in stock. Which of course I can't promise in a video that might last for years. <laughs> Let's just see. Now, um, to uh, the setup I have right here, let's take a look at what we have. We have the PTC Pro controller connected with Ethernet, power supplied by 12 volt, USB connection to my computer. This is only needed for configuration. So as long as I want to tweak parameters in the how the controller buttons work, I need that connection. You can take it out in a normal operational scenario. Then I have a, um, a video feed over to a recording device. And I have Ethernet connection for the camera as well. In fact, this is PoE. So the camera currently runs on power over Ethernet. And um, they communicate over Ethernet. Now, with the PTC Optics camera, you can also control it via serial. So our controllers are always IP native. If you want to control it over, over serial instead, like RS-232 uh, or 244, 422, yeah, <laughs> um, then you need a serial to Ethernet converter, which is, uh, um, I mean, for PTC Optics camera, you, why would you care? It has Ethernet support in it. Um, but um, if you worked with some of the other cameras, because traditionally Visca cameras have been using serial communication, you may want such a converter. So uh, let's zoom in on the PTC Optics controller and uh, see how we have um, set it up to work with this uh, camera. Before we do so, uh, I can show you that we do have pan, tilt, zoom control. This will not be the focus of this video because I want to show you all these awesome parameter uh, configurations we can do, which is the real power of the controller. 
Um, but of course I can uh, work with the camera like this. I also have some presets set up. So um, you can see I can recall those. And we have a separate video for that as well because we have a really awesome way of using the nice displays on our controllers for naming presets. And I wanna show that off in a separate video. So this is the PTC Pro controller. We have the camera selector down here. This is how I have set it up for this demonstration because if you wanna use named presets, you wanna put presets on these buttons instead. Then we have a selector up here. This would usually be either preset selection or camera selection. So right now I've set it up to recall presets. That was a recall of preset number two. Now I recall preset number three. If I wanna store a preset, let's say I'm just moving the camera a little bit here and uh, then I wanna store a new preset. I just hold the button and now I have a preset stored there so I can go to this one and over to the other one I stored. Huh. So I ended up demonstrating presets anyway. But this is the main focus of interest. The menu that will give us access to parameters. So I have exposure, white balance, color settings, image. I have a noise reduction, power. Uh, this is like uh, on off features like power, menu display, image flip, so forth. And uh, nothing on U3 and U4 has uh, something for focus mode. So why does this make sense having a blank menu option? Well, the the, um, the user uh, banks in the menu are meant for you to put stuff into. So you can now just imagine that uh, if you wanna use uh, user bank three for settings in for the encoder knobs, you can so easily do that by going into the web interface and then assign a function to uh, the encoders in, in that case. So that's really powerful and a typical Unisketch stuff. Unisketch is the software that runs on all our controllers and is the reason why any controller we make that can do this, uh, no, the other way. Anything you can see this controller do can be assigned to any other controller you find in our product catalog. That's a pretty cool feature and the consequence of having the same operating system, Unisketch, for all these controllers. Let's get back to the, to the device here. In exposure mode, I'm currently having uh, auto exposure mode selected. And uh, you can also see on the output that we have some stripes on the picture. Uh, in fact, we have secondary options for exposure mode and this camera supports a great feature called flicker reduction. So if I press here, you see I access secondary options for exposure mode and I have a button for flicker reduction. So immediately I change this. You see that I'm now at 50 Hertz because we are in Europe. If I go to 60 Hertz, I have a little bit of banding on the picture. So it's 50 Hertz is of course the right setting for me. And that would be a good example of a feature you don't find in every robotic camera, but PTC Optics has it. So of course we support it and we know exactly which values are available on the camera. Likewise, if I wanna enable backlight on off, I can do that. If I press again, I go back to the main menu here, I can select a different exposure mode, like in this case, whoa. Okay, so that was automatic exposure. I need to do something about that. So now I get the banding again because the exposure mode doesn't match the refresh rate of my LED lamps. I can adjust gain settings and so forth. Uh, of course, I have shutter exposure mode, iris exposure mode, something called bright. Bright is a mode that you find uh, not in every Visca camera either. You find it in PTC Optics. And um, this would then have a setting that is found on the secondary page here. Likewise with gain limit and so forth. Some of these options are grayed out because you simply can't access them when you are in the particular exposure mode, like for instance, uh, those exposure compensation modes. So if I go back to auto, you'll see that on the secondary page, I have exposure compensation here. I can turn it on and then I can work with the exposure compensation of the camera to have more or less uh, of that. Now, um, if I go to white balance, you find the kind of same thing. We can have automatic white balance, indoor, outdoor, one push. So I press and hold this one and it will uh, white balance the camera. There we go. And then I can go to manual mode. In manual mode, I can turn these knobs to have uh, manual white balancing with red gain and blue gain. If I uh, go further, no, I can't go further. These are the options we have. So that's it. Go to color mode, luminance, contrast, hue, saturation, um, for the camera. Uh, we can have really freaky colors. Yes. And then in the um, sharpness mode, I can uh, have automatic sharpness or manual sharpness. I can adjust the sharpness parameters. So now we get really ugly pictures. 
Um, of course, we don't want that. We'll go back to auto again, and we should probably remove some of that saturation. Oh, one feature, if you hold down the button, it um, it will lock the, the setting, so you can't adjust it. Um, and we'll put it back to, okay, 100, sounds natural. Then we have the noise reduction. We have the power and uh, left, right, reverse, and so forth. And for instance, let's take the left, right, reverse, because of course, where does all these settings come from? Well, they come from uh, the camera of themselves, of course, but you can access all of this if you take the remote control for the camera and you go into the menu. Uh, for instance, now we just turned on left, right. Where is that? Maybe in setup? That was not the case, so maybe in either. Then it's in image. Yeah, so here you have flip edge. So horizontal flip of the image is the one setting that I just enabled, and you can see it's now turned on. So everything you find in uh, the menu, the on-screen menu for the camera, will generally be available for the controller. So I promised you that we could utilize the um, uh, U3, the button, that will um, that is currently blank. So just to give you an idea about how this would work, then if we access the web interface of the controller, and we do that with a firmware application from Skahoy, then uh, we, we can uh, access this. So with the firmware updater connected with USB, you simply press the un uh, wait local configuration button, and local configuration will take you to a web page residing on the controller. The controller reboots right now, and then um, when it, it's up again, uh, we have access to a web interface, and there we go. You see the web interface. So what I want to do now is to assign functionality to the menu in case we are in um, uh, U3. And U3 is found as a column in the configuration. Oh, well, just, just a second. So what we want to do, let's say on knob number one, we want to adjust uh, the image flip. So I would go knob number one, and here you see the configuration on screen for knob number one. And it's, it's uh, particularly the, the menu U3 we want to do this for. So we'll just disable everything else so it's not confusing us. And you see for U3, we have no action assigned to knob number one. But now we want to assign something. So we go to the list of actions that's available. And this is even in the limited edition mode. So you won't miss out on being able to remap functionality on the controller. You can always do that no matter which version you have. But now we look in this list, and um, we should be able to find the image flip. It's probably under system. So for the PG20X system, then you see if I'm uh, for camera number one, uh, and here we need to uh, select the camera called memory A, because that's the camera selected with the camera selector. And now you see the list of things we can do. So we have image flip, which would be uh, it's probably left, right, reverse, because it's the horizontal dim uh, dimension. And uh, then um, it doesn't matter what we choose here. That's in case we have a button. This just gave you an insight into how advanced you can go with your controller configuration in the Skahoy universe, thanks to Unisketch. You don't have to. It comes out of the box with great presets that will make it work instantly with your PTC Optics cameras.